Welcome to another unit in this SPSS course. This time I'm going to talk about how we can use SPSS to run a kernel density estimation. Well, maybe you already realize that the standard version of SPSS does not include an estimator for kernel densities. That's due to the fact that for what we are going to do, we need the so-called R essentials for SPSS. If you never heard about the R essentials or just want to get a basic introduction in them, uh, feel free to visit the corresponding unit in this course. Else I will just continue and assume you already installed this. So if we want to do this, we can go to analyze. Then with descriptive statistics, we have in a very low part, the last one here, and you see the plus means it's like an add-on. We have here fit smooth distributions. And that's just a nice uh, fancy name for kernel density estimations. And then up here you already see I selected one of the variables. I can also select the second one. Next part here with smoothing can kernel. That's where I select like the basic what it should roughly look like. If you never heard about this, leave this at Epanechnikov or switch to Gaussian. So that's the two basic ones. You can go with any one of them. Well, but if you're a bit more into this, you can also use at least some more sophisticated versions. Aside from this, we can tell him how much he smith should smooth this, so how many points in the distribution he should evaluate and whether we actually only want to have them evaluated or plotted. Well, usually the goal is to actually get the density plot, so you should leave this here on as well. So that's basically then all there is. So you can just click on OK and he will generate here First off, give me some general statistics on the distribution and here returns the corresponding plots. So that's first the density plot for the first variable, which was height, and the second one, which was for weight, uh, for happiness or happiness. What we see here, this looks more or less normally distributed. So there's a little bit missing here in this part, but at least there's only like one peak and well the distribution flattens towards the end. So this is actually what we were looking for when we trying to do this. This is a good idea to go for. However, in some cases you might also get strange results like this. Well, why do we get results like this? Because here I only have answers which are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So he only can estimate values for those ones. So there's not really anything where we can assume this to be continuous. That's why this looks so strange. So best use the kernel density estimation only on variables where you can assume with a halfway decent, well, sensibility of the variables to actually be continuous. If you use really, as we did here, really distinct, really discrete variables, if you use something like um, nominally scaled variables, this will usually not turn out in any decent fashion. And well, the main idea here is get an idea what the actual underlying density function would look like. Well, we actually achieved this goal here in this context. We also see something else here that he, for both cases, reports the corresponding bandwidth. So we could actually use this then to know what he did before because that's the two values we need. We need the kernel and we need the bandwidth. 
And well, as I said, that's already all there is on this unit with regard to kernel density estimations. So I hope you enjoyed this short session. And if you want to see more on SPSS, feel free to visit the rest of the course or have a look in the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.